Hi, my name is Jared Morris, and uh, I came out here with a couple of my friends from Austin, Texas. And, Austin! Uh, <laughs> and uh, first of all, we were hoping that we could get our picture with you at some point today. And uh, second of all, I was wondering if you could explain for us the difference between isolationism and non-interventionism. Okay. Well, you know, in, in Texas, um, now don't take this wrong about Texas, but we frequently would kid about Austin. We think Austin is not quite like real Texas, you know. <laughs> but, but it turns out that Austin now has the biggest meetup group in the whole country. <laughs> So there has to be a lot of good people in Austin, <laughs> and uh, they, they tend to uh, like their individual freedom and individual choices and, and a uh, more sensible foreign policy, even though Austin is uh, uh, very close to a very uh, important figure in our country right now, uh, not too far from where our president lives. <laughs> but uh, on, on interventionism versus isolationism, I think it is important. Some people don't mind the use of word of isolation, but the word's been destroyed and it's been used as a pejorative and that is if you believe in, in, in uh, non-interventions foreign policy where you mind your own business and we just take care of ourselves and we don't start wars around the world, oh, that's just isolationism. What was the accusation? Oh, you're the kind of guy that would start World War III. You know, like, like the people who didn't want to go to war in, in 1939 are the ones who caused the war? I mean, what, what kind of thinking is that? So um, uh, isolationism to me is where, where you isolate yourself from the world, that you try to uh, not trade with people, talk with people, uh, travel with people, not to have diplomatic relations with them and not try to work out problems between countries, whether they're environmental or whatever. You talk and try to work these things out. Um, but isolationism, you wouldn't do that. And, it would divide people on, on the issue of tariffs. If the government messes up an economy and they undermine the ability of our companies to compete, they think, well, the solution is, is what we need to do is keep all the competition out. No, you need to get the government off our back, lower the taxes, lower the regulations, have sound money, and so that we can compete again. But instead, we create a system that makes it very hard for us to compete the jobs go overseas partially because of our monetary system. Then they say, oh, we got to put barriers up. Don't let anything come in. I see that in the front to personal liberty because you ought to have the right to spend your money the best way you can. If you can get a good deal, you have that right. Why should I do something to make you spend three or four times more for a product you want uh, when you can get it cheaper? So it's a freedom of choice in, in, uh, in that area as well. But... Um, Isol isolationism is something I don't endorse uh, because I'm, I'm not uh, a, a protectionist in that sense, where non-intervention means that we follow what we are talking about earlier on our foreign policy, that we don't tell other people what, how to run their countries. We don't get involved, like the founders advised, in the internal affairs of foreign nations. We don't get involved in entangling alliances. The president, I mean, our president, Today, when he ran in 2000, he, uh, he was talking like I'm talking. You know, he said he was, he was condemning Clinton, you know, for uh, nation building and, and playing the role of the world policeman, condemning Clinton for going into Bosnia and Kosovo. I mean, if you talk about foreign interventions, they were relatively minor compared to what we're doing now. You know, here we've invaded two countries, and our party isn't even willing to take off take off the table the option of a nuclear first strike against Iran. This is, this is not very sensible at all. Those individuals who advocate that policy are interventionists, militantly so, and they believe this country really, it, although we've been involved for a long time uh, under, you know, undermining different governments and involved in elections, but this is the first time we have been blatantly open about invading a country and starting the war. They call it preemptive or preventative war. That is a serious departure. On civil liberties, we've had a serious departure because our privacy has been undermined and the concept of, of habeas corpus has been undermined. We live in very serious times. It's not out of runaway, you know, it's not totally out of control, but the precedents have been set. So the potential is that even if we appear to be supportive of certain elements, we can be considered an enemy combatant and lose our constitutional rights 
this is something we have to fight for, and this is something that this election is all about. Possible for the Texas boys to get a quick picture? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, you weird Austin people. Yeah. <laughs> Are you all from Austin? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, we went to A&M. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. This guy didn't The Phil Graham territory, huh? But he was long gone by the time you got there. <laughs> Can I grab one of them? Good. Yeah. Glad you're here. Austin, too. Yeah, good. Good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Be a pleasure to give me a big Oh, yeah, there we go. Here we go. That's a good one. I have a granddaughter that's, uh, that's in Texas right now. Really? I have a son that went to Texas and got a degree, but his wife got his degree. He heard degree from A&M. <laughs> and they're both engineers. Very nice to meet you. Good to meet you. God bless. Oh, I